In this video, we're going to do a quick review of the different types of chemical reactions. You can identify them based on what the reactions look like. Um, so these are the main reactions that you'll see that you have to identify. We have um, synthesis, we have decomposition, we have single replacement and double replacement. You can also, instead of writing replacement, write displacement. Displacement, it's the same thing. Displacement, it's an N there. Okay, single displacement or single replacement, double replacement or double displacement. So in a synthesis reaction, you have two things coming together to make one thing. So two smaller things make one thing. They make a single product. Okay, so multiple reactants, two or more things, multiple reactants come together to make one single product. Decomposition is essentially the reverse or the opposite. It's when one reactant breaks down breaks apart to make two or more products, multiple products. So it's the reverse of synthesis, the opposite of synthesis. In a single displacement or single replacement reaction, you have a single element reacting with a compound. That single element kicks an element from the compound out. So now the other, the element that was in the compound is now alone. And the one that was single before is now in the compound. So A kicks B out. B is now alone, A is now with C. So A took B's partner, A and C are together, B is alone. So in a single displacement, you, all, you make a compound in the end, and then you have an element that's alone once again. But it's a different element alone. A double displacement is a bit of a happier ending here. We have two compounds reacting, so no elements reacting, just two compounds. Um, and they switch partners, A goes where C was, C goes where A was. So now A is with D and um, C is with B. And so uh, what happens is they swapped partners and uh, in the end, no one is alone. Everyone still has a partner, just a different partner. And it's called a double displacement or a double replacement, okay? Um, now the next type of reaction that you'll see is what's called combustion reactions. So there's one reaction called a complete combustion, complete combustion, and one reaction called an incomplete combustion. Both types of combustions involve burning a fuel with oxygen. You burn a fuel with oxygen. The fuel is usually what's is usually a hydrocarbon. Hydrocarbon is just um, a compound made up of a bunch of carbon and hydrogen. There could be other things there, but it's a bunch of carbon and hydrogen. I'm putting CXHY because um, you could have different numbers of carbons and hydrogen. So for example, I could have C3, whoops, C3H8, or I could have CH4. They're both hydrocarbons, even though they have different amounts of carbons and hydrogens. But the main point is, when you have a complete combustion, you have a lot of oxygen. We say sufficient or abundant oxygen. That means a lot. So the hydrocarbon reacts with oxygen, and it will produce water and carbon dioxide. Plus, we say energy as well. So that's for a complete combustion. For an incomplete combustion, you have a hydrocarbon reacting with oxygen, but it's insufficient not a lot of oxygen, insufficient. Insufficient means not a lot. The in there means not a lot, okay? So sufficient meant there's a lot there, enough, but insufficient means there's not enough. And what you're gonna see is you're gonna get similar products. You'll get water and carbon dioxide again, but in addition to those, you'll get carbon monoxide and then just the element carbon, okay? Um, so with that general overview, we should be able to go take a look at some equations and classify them as either being single displacement, double displacement, combustion reaction, decomposition, or synthesis. So let's do some examples together. If you feel confident with this already based on your learning that you've already done, you can pause the video, try it yourself, and then um, uh, come back and check your work by unpausing the video. So let's start with this first one here. We have an element reacting with a compound. In the end, you have a single element and a compound again. So it looks like the Na switched spots with an H in there. And now we have an H alone, and the Na is in a compound. 
So it doesn't look like synthesis because synthesis will only have one thing. It doesn't look like decomposition because you have one thing breaking down into many things. And we didn't have one reactant here. We had two. So I'm thinking it's more along the lines of single or double displacement. I wouldn't say combustion because I didn't see any hydrocarbons. Um, so it looks like because I have something alone in the end, this is a single displacement reaction. Over here for question two, I have two things coming together to make one thing. Many reactants make one product. So it doesn't look like anything switching spots. It doesn't look like any of these patterns here where I have two things produced in the end. It doesn't look like something broke down. It actually looks like the opposite. It looks like two things made one thing. So this is a synthesis reaction. Okay. Over here, FES plus HCl produces FeCl2 plus H2S. I have two compounds reacting. So maybe it's synthesis because two things, but oh, wait a minute. It should make one if it's synthesis. So no, it's not synthesis. I know that. Um, and it's not something breaking down. So it's probably single or double displacement. So I have to look as, is there anything alone? There's nothing alone. Everything has a partner in the end, just different partners. The Fe was here. Now the Fe is here with Cl. The H was here. Now the H is with S. So they switch partners. So we have a double displacement or double replacement reaction. Okay. Here we have one thing making many products. So it looks like that was broken down. Because I was broken down, that's likely a decomposition reaction. Great. So let's go to our uh, question five here. We have um, CH4 plus O2 reacts with, uh, produces CO2 and H2O. So what you'll notice here is that this is a hydrocarbon and it's reacting with oxygen and it's producing carbon dioxide and water. So it looks like I'm, I'm producing this stuff here, but none of this stuff over here. So we have a combustion reaction. And more specifically, if you want to write that down, you have a complete combustion reaction. All right, let's try the next one. Hopefully you're trying some on your own at this point um, because you're getting the idea of this. So the first step is recognition um, of these types of reactions. And then you'll be able to predict the products on your own later on. Uh, so we have a single element reacting with a compound right away. A single element reacting with a compound you should think, okay, well, maybe it's a displacement reaction. Let's just check what's on the other side though. Okay, so I know it's not synthesis because it's not one product only. So I think it's gonna be a, a displacement reaction. And I know it's a single displacement because there's a single element left here. The Fe kicked the Cu out. Cu is now alone, Fe is with a partner, but something is still alone. So we have a single displacement reaction. All right, Ki plus Cl2 produces KCl plus I2. So once again, we know it's not synthesis because it's not two things making one. We know it's not decomposition because it's not one thing breaking apart into several things. Um, and so that means and it could be combustion, but I don't think so because I don't see any hydrocarbons um, or oxygen. Uh, so I think that it's probably going to be a displacement. Um, so we have a single element here. It looks like it kicked the I out and the I is now alone and the K and CL are together. So something is still alone. Because something is still alone, that makes this a single displacement reaction. All right. Number eight is pretty straightforward. We have two things coming together to make one. So two things making one. Um, and since it's two things making one, we have a synthesis reaction. Number nine, one thing breaking apart into two things, two, two uh, chemicals. Um, so we know we have the opposite of synthesis, which is decomposition. And lastly, number 10, we have hydrocarbon reacting with oxygen, producing CO2 and H2O. We know it's combustion because we have a hydrocarbon reacting with oxygen. What type of combustion is it? Well, it looks like complete combustion again because all we have is the water and CO2. We don't have the CO and the C. Um, so this is a complete combustion reaction. So in this video, we saw a brief overview of the different types of chemical reactions, synthesis, decomposition, single, double displacement or replacement. We also saw combustions, which can be complete or incomplete. Um, and your first skill that you need to have is being able to um, identify what type of reaction you're dealing with. But eventually you'll be able to actually predict products of reaction. So for example, and, and this you'll see later on, 
if I gave you, if I said calcium uh, reacts with um, O2, predict the products. So you should be able to figure out, okay, well, there's two things. These two things are probably going to come together to make one. How do I find out the formula? Oh, yeah, that's right. Crisscross. That's stuff you learned before. So Ca plus 2, O minus 2, crisscross it. You get Ca2O2, reduce, and you get CaO. So you knew, just based on the patterns of what a synthesis looks like, that this would be a synthesis. And you came up with the formula because you knew it's a metal with a non-metal that's ionic, crisscross. And then if you want to put everything together, you can even balance in the end. Put a two here, put a one here, put a two there. And so you might start off doing these things very slowly, but eventually with enough practice, you'll balance as quickly as I just did there. You'll just kind of glance at it and you'll know what to do because the strategies are always the same. Sometimes there will be some that take a bit longer than others, but for the most part, you'll find yourself getting better. So this might take you initially, you know, five, 10 minutes to do, but then with practice, you can get down to doing this in a minute, 30 seconds, even if you do enough practice. And that's super important, especially if you're planning on taking some chemistry um, in grade 11 or 12, or even some biology, because biology, there is chemistry in there. You can't run away from chemistry forever. Chemistry is everywhere, right? Chemistry is all over the place. So um, at this point, you reviewed all the basic skills um, for um chemical reactions that includes naming, writing reactions out uh, as word, uh, skeleton, uh, or uh, balance equations. And you're also able to identify types of reactions. Our next skill set is going to be predicting products of these type of reactions.